Hi everyone, I'm Justin, and welcome to another chapter in Road Choice Clutch Technical Training. These days, replacing a clutch also means replacing clutch accessories. So let's go over which additional items should be swapped out with every clutch installation. This is important because as these accessories wear out, they can affect the performance and longevity of the clutch. Most of these parts are relatively inexpensive, and we recommend replacing them with every clutch. Here's a quick introduction to each one. Let's start with the release fork. Worn fork fingers will cause wear to the sleeve bushing and cause adjustment problems. Solution? Replace the fork. Constant wear on the cross shafts and linkage system can lead to a variety of problems, including adjustment issues, hard pedal, and premature sleeve bushing wear. Plan on replacing the cross shafts with every installation. Linkage hardly ever needs to be replaced, but it definitely needs to be checked every time. Worn cross shaft bushings will allow sideways thrust on the release bearing, which in turn causes wear on the sleeve bushing plus premature wear on the release bearing. So it's always a good idea to replace the cross shaft bushing. Too much wear will allow the input shaft to wobble, and that's going to create vibration which can lead to premature failure. The best practice is to replace the transmission input shaft bearing with every clutch replacement. When measured, the input shaft should be 8.657 inches in length, but if it's longer than 8.71 inches, the transmission input shaft bearing retainer needs to be replaced. The reason? A worn or rough surface will lead to premature clutch brake wear and adjustment problems. Any roughness in the bushing area can lead to sleeve bushing failure. This can cause the bushing to pull out of the sleeve. And worn splines on the input shaft will cause the clutch to not release properly and may cause splined hubs in the clutch disc to break out. Any wear on the input shaft pilot bearing area will allow the shaft to wobble and vibrate, which can lead to premature clutch failure. Replacing the input shaft during the install will give the clutch its best chance for a long and productive life. Over time, normal wear and flywheel resurfacing will cause a loss of material, which throws off proper spacing. To add back thickness, use a fiber spacer. A clutch brake is used on non-synchronized transmissions to slow or stop the input shaft when the clutch pedal is depressed. It's designed to be engaged at engine idle when the truck is stopped. The clutch brake should be replaced at every clutch installation. The final accessory to tell you about is the pilot bearing. If the bearing seizes up, it will cause premature wear on the pilot bearing area. It'll also contribute to clutch brake failure and make gear changes very difficult. Again, the solution is to go ahead and replace the pilot bearing with each installation. For each of these components, the idea is to correct wear and tear issues before they create problems. So make these accessories part of every clutch replacement that you do. Well, that's it for this chapter. I hope you'll explore the other chapters in this clutch technical training series to make sure your clutch knowledge is up to date. You'll find all the parts information you need at roadchoice.com, and you can always contact us directly with questions about what you learned here. This is Justin with Road Choice Truck Parts, and I'll see you next time.